Al Jazeera producer Kai Suzimi spent eight hours in the area visiting the main base and three smaller outposts and he was told the Taliban intend to use this area as a bridgehead, a base from which they intend to take more territory. This used to be an American base here in Kulangor Valley, but now it's controlled by Taliban. The Taliban are also saying that they will follow American forces whenever they go to fight them. Kais was told that in addition to the local Taliban, a number of foreign, mainly Arab fighters, had moved into the area. These pictures were filmed just five days ago. The Americans destroyed some of their own equipment before they withdrew, following a decision by their commander, General Stanley McChrystal, to concentrate more of their resources on urban areas. They call it a repositioning of forces. However, the Taliban call it a defeat. This fighter says the rounds around his neck were left behind by the Americans. They say they have boxes of U.S. ammunition and tons of fuel left in the underground tanks of the U.S. base. There is a lot of ammunition left behind. Mortars, rockets, missiles. This, God willing, we will use against them. You may remember Richard's earlier series of reports from the so-called Valley of Death, a highly dangerous remote mountain region near the border with Pakistan. The deadly Korangal River Valley, a center for Afghan resistance. For several years now, our own Richard Engel has covered the fierce fighting at one particular outpost in the Korangal Valley. Forty-two Americans have died defending it, and this week the Americans have pulled out. three women running by in front of a house just sprinting. Women don't do that. You know, they don't do that right here. They covered up their faces ran it looked like one of them had an icon, a radio to be able to contact the enemy. I'm like, yeah, we're gonna get hit. Pretty pretty guaranteed, hundred percent guaranteed. Ready to go? Yeah. Where's it coming from? They got us pinned down in a tight spot, right? Every time we move, they're shooting at us. So I need a presence here in the Karen Gall. Just need to push in the Karen Gall. Wherever I looked, there was like no cover. And like all I had was like those bundle of branches. Bullets were just kicking up all over the place. And I'm gonna get hit, I'm gonna get hit. Just keep on running. It was like slow motion because I felt like it was going so slow, but before I knew it, I was already up the hill.
In the last year, Viper Company has been in more than 500 firefights. And if you're looking at my rockets and grenades, the reason I'm they call in air support. And more than in time, more. all things shall pass away. In time, you may come back someday. Hey, we're gonna need some suppression on Laniel Spur and also watch our movement from the building that we were in earlier. We're gonna start bounding down, over. On this day, the men of Bravo Company must rescue a Humvee that has fallen into a ditch. It's a time-consuming task, which makes them easy targets. On this patrol, 2nd Platoon Bravo Company heads to the nearby village of Laniol to meet with elders and gain traction in what they hope will become a counterinsurgency campaign there. After the bomb explodes, the Taliban begins an ambush with small arms fire and rocket-propelled grenades. The Americans take what cover they can. Five American soldiers had walked down the trail, and the insurgents detonated the bomb under the sixth man. By doing it this way, the American patrol is now divided. repeatedly. Ready, Campbell? Yeah, I'm with you. Hey, let's go! 
Go faster, please. You have to say, hey, someone grab a side. Let's go. Ah, fuck off. Shit. Shit. Hey, get this guy out of the way. One man, Private First Class Richard DeWater, has been killed. The fourth man killed on the platoon in nine months here, and the sixteenth man killed in the battalion. Where is it coming from, though? Up there? Okay, okay. Look, soil's down there. Stop the Roger, truck. Roger. All right? Leo, stand by where you're at. Doc, you stopped the bleeding, right? I need you to hold on, all right? And right now, our position is wide open from this ridge line, but this is the best place for air medevac, so we kind of have to stay here. And I'm shooting 1-5 just to uh, freaking keep enemy from wanting to come over here and shoot us from this side. Yeah, yeah. You ready for red smoke? Suddenly it's clear a soldier has been hit and badly wounded. The men light a red smoke stick, which signals the helicopter to beware of hostile fire. Bravo Company has lost five men in the first two months of their stay here. Their tour will last another year. The specially adapted Black Hawk spends just moments on the ground to take on its passenger. But a few minutes into its journey, it's over. The soldier is officially pronounced dead. Not be able to do anything, but you still got to. You're still pulling security. You're still sitting there. And you got to sit there calmly. Not got to not let it show. Got to keep a tight lip. In one firefight, two Afghan contractors are wounded. There you go. And in the end, nothing can be done to save the Humvee. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. The soldiers destroy the Humvee to prevent it from falling into enemy hands. The stakes in Afghanistan are very high. The U.S. military does not have the critical mass on the ground to be the deciding force right now. The assumptions about how do you have outcomes in these conflicts, who are the good guys, who are the bad guys, how do we win, how do we avoid losing, have all fallen apart. Everybody in the region knows this. I've got guns coming in on 5-1. I've got guns coming in on 4-0 as well. Break. We are close. Hey, 262, you have a negative on the neck. Just this way, bro. Go, here we go. The soldiers have become fast and lethal. They quickly identify the 10 or so Taliban attacking in teams of two. The soldiers are hardened. They've learned to block out emotions, focus, and manage their adrenaline. Some of the rounds were bouncing right off these rocks around us. 
Now they're trying to put out as much fire as they can to try and cut the attackers. The soldiers fire so much, ammunition is running low. Slow your rate of fire! Get served by ammo! For the last four and a half years, the Korangol has been known as Afghanistan's Valley of Death. We're taking heavy fire from... American soldiers braved a thousand gunfights to hold just six miles. We've been following the Korangol for a year and a half Christ and witnessed firsthand the intense guerrilla war. We came under attack that killed 42 Americans here. This time, we return to watch soldiers pack up. Taking away 500,000 pounds of satellite equipment and cases of unused ammunition. It was all loaded into cargo nets and under the cover of darkness, slung under transport helicopters. What was too heavy or too dangerous to move was disposed of by demolition expert Staff Sergeant Gary French. French said the Taliban will pick over the base as soon as U.S. troops leave. I would say they'd be here within 15, 20 minutes. So the demolition team brought in 10,000 pounds of high explosive. Fire in the hole! Fire in the hole! Just moments ago, there was a building here full of munitions. Now there's just a field of debris, some of it still smoldering and hot. The U.S. military is blowing up this outpost piece by piece. The soldiers don't want to leave anything useful behind for the Taliban. Following a decision by their commander, General Stanley McChrystal, to concentrate more of their resources on urban areas, they call it a repositioning of forces. He says the Americans could never pacify the area because they didn't manage to take control of this dirt road, the main supply route in the valley, and because they couldn't intercept the Taliban's communications. The locals in this valley have their own language spoken by just a few thousand people. As US commanders watch these pictures, they should perhaps recall the words of President Obama when less than five months ago he announced a major increase of troops. We must deny Al-Qaeda a safe haven, he said. We must reverse the Taliban's momentum. Yet now there is a new area beyond the control of the Afghan government where the Taliban and possibly foreign fighters are massing. James Bay's Al Jazeera, Kabul.